Okay, so we know that igneous rocks form from molten rock, rock that has been melted. But what causes that melting, right? Where does the magma come from in the beginning? So we're gonna talk about three ways that rocks can melt. Decompression melting, flux melting, and heat transfer. And when we talk about these different ways, we are going to use this graph. So on this graph, the x-axis is increasing temperature. So it gets hotter and hotter and hotter as you move to the right on this graph. And the y-axis is depth and pressure. So as you go down this graph, you're getting deeper and deeper into the earth with more and more and more pressure. So decompression melting, that occurs when pressure decreases, but temperature remains the same. Right? So if you pick a spot anywhere on this graph, if the rock starts there and then pressure decreases, but temperature remains the same, that means that rock in this graph is just going to move upward, right? Not left or right, just upward. And because the pressure is released, that solid can actually melt and become a liquid because pressure keeps things solid. When we release that pressure, the atoms are able to expand, move away from each other, and become a liquid. All right, so decompression melting, this can happen in many places um, within Earth. That can happen as a mantle plume rises up to the surface. Okay. That can also happen as um, the lithosphere starts to rift apart and that lithosphere begins to thin. And as that lithosphere thins, the uh, asthenosphere below it begins to rise up uh, or not even rise up, but just as the, as the lithosphere, lith lithosphere thins, there's less and less pressure on the mantle below it. This can also happen at a mid-ocean ridge, right? Uh, we know that uh, the mantle uh, circulates, right? And that hot material rises up towards the surface at a mid-ocean ridge where that divergent plate boundary is in the ocean. All right, so it's decompression melting, where the temperature can stay the same, but when pressure is relieved, rocks can melt. Flux melting occurs um, when volatiles like water and volatiles just mean that it melts at a low temperature. Um, so volatiles like water uh, help break chemical bonds within minerals. All right, so chemical bonds that uh, would normally remain intact, would normally keep that material a solid. If a volatile like water is introduced and those uh, water compounds start interacting with those chemical bonds, those chemical bonds can break, allowing that rock to become a liquid, allowing it to melt. All right, so this happens at subduction zones, right? So where oceanic plates are subducting beneath continental plates and that ocean water is being subducted and brought down deep into the mantle, when the ocean water reaches the mantle and interacts with those mantle rocks, it can cause those mantle rocks to melt. So flux melting, think of water being moved in, water being fluxed in down into the mantle, causing melting. All right, so coming back to this graph, um, the pressure can stay the exact same, the temperature can stay the exact same. The only thing that changes is that uh, the rock is able to melt at that pressure and temperature because water or some other volatile is added. All right, so that boundary between when a rock will melt and will, when a rock will not melt within this pressure temperature space changes but the pressure and temperature of the rock itself does not change. All right, the third way that a rock can melt is with heat transfer, right? This just means it gets really, really hot, right? Um, rocks can get really, really hot if there is magma nearby, right? You can imagine being close to a magma chamber, you're gonna get really, really hot. So as the heat from the magma chamber radiates out into the rock around it, it can actually start melting the rock around it. Okay, so in these instances, the temperature will increase while the pressure remains the same. 